Hello, everyone. Once again, thank you so much for your time. Today, I'd like to continue on our discussion on analog modulation. Our topic for today's discussion is to understand amplitude modulation in frequency domain. This will be the part three series discussion on amplitude modulation. The earlier on series discussion, I have put the video link under the description. So please go through the video if you keen to know more about amplitude modulation. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and subscribe buttons. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Thank you so much. Let's do a very quick discussion on amplitude modulation in time domain. At the amplitude modulation, there are actually two input. One we call modulating signal, another one is the carrier. The modulating signal is the original signal that we want to send to the receiver. The carrier, like the name implied, actually help to carry the information from the transmitter to the receiver. Typically, carrier has a higher frequency as compared to the modulating signal. At the output of the amplitude modulation is the modulated signal. The modulated signal has two major characteristics. One, they have the frequency exactly the same as the carrier signal. Next, the envelope of the modulated signal is actually the modulating signal. So this is what I have discussed with you on the previous video. Our objective for today is the frequency domain. From this diagram, you can see that at the amplitude modulation, there will be two input. One is the modulating signal. Another one is the carrier signal. Let's assume the modulating signal is a sine wave. Okay, so for sine wave, they typically has only one frequency component in the frequency domain, which is illustrated here. And they have a frequency of FM. FM simply is the frequency of the modulating signal. Next, for carrier, is always only one component in the frequency domain. And typically, carrier has a higher frequency. Okay, if you compare these two diagram, you can see that carrier has a higher frequency as compared to the modulating signal. After the amplitude modulation is the modulated signal. So on my previous video, we already derived there are actually three components in the frequency domain. Right in the middle is the carrier, flanked by lower sideband and upper sideband. The separation is exactly the same, which means that the separation from the lower sideband to the carrier is the same as the separation between the upper sideband to the carrier. This we call double sideband full carrier which I'm going to discuss further more on the next slide. This is the equation for amplitude modulation for modulated signal, which I have derived on the part two series discussion on amplitude modulation. From this formula, okay, we can see that amplitude modulation produce the following component. Number one, low side frequency. Okay, so low side frequency is denoted as LSF and they have a frequency of carrier frequency minus the modulating frequency. Okay, so this lower side band is represented by this term here. Next, we have this upper side frequency which denoted as USF with a frequency of carrier frequency plus the modulating signal. And again, this USF is denoted by this term here. And last but not least, the carrier frequency, okay, which is represented by this term here, they have a frequency denoted as FC 
which is the frequency of the carrier signal. Let's quickly discuss about double sideband full carrier, which I have shown it to you earlier on. This is the low side frequency. This is the upper side frequency. Like what I mentioned, the separation between the low side frequency to the carrier is FM. Same for this upper side frequency, the separation between upper side frequency against the carrier is also FM. So if we need to calculate the bandwidth, okay, the formula to calculate bandwidth is always the highest frequency minus the lowest frequency. This point here, you can see that this is the highest frequency and this is the lowest frequency. You can compute that the bandwidth is actually two times FM, which is, means that two times the frequency of the modulating signal. So this is double sideband full carrier. Next, we have this double sideband suppressed carrier, okay, which means that we do not have this carrier signal. Actually, the carrier does not play any significant role by transmitting this over to the receiver. They don't carry any information at all. The information actually is contained at lower side frequency or upper side frequency. Hence, it's actually meaningless to send over the carrier signal. Hence, in order to improve the transmit power, we actually can suppress away the carrier. So this is what we call double sideband suppressed carrier. Next, we have this single sideband suppressed carrier. Like what I mentioned earlier on, as long as I have either one lower sideband or upper sideband, I actually can recover back the modulating signal. So again, it's useless to have the carrier and we don't need the two signal flanked together. So therefore, either one, okay, we actually can recover back the original modulating signal. Next, let's quickly discuss if the modulating signal is actually ranged from F1 to F2. So this is what you mean. So instead of one frequency component, for example, there are various domain in this frequency from F1 to F2. So this signal can actually represent by this blue color triangular wave as illustrated as a modulating signal. In next, you can see again, this is the carrier. Typically, carrier has a higher frequency. Okay, let's discuss about the modulated signal. Right in the middle is the carrier frequency. Okay, you can see that this exactly same image is copied at the upper side band. This lower side band, imagine, okay, so it's a mirror image. So this mirror image has exactly the same shape and bandwidth as compared to the upper side band as illustrated here. Okay, the upper side band has same shape and bandwidth as lower side band. The okay, USB and LSB are mirror image of each other. So you can see from here, this is a mirror. So they have the same shape, same bandwidth, and they actually, like a mirror, they are exactly the same component. With this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Thank you so much.